What up everyone, welcome back. So today's video, pretty exciting. We're gonna be talking about steering wheels. Um, I don't know, if most of you guys probably already know, installing one of these isn't too difficult. Uh, you just unplug it, swap the airbag over, you're good to go. But when you get to one of these, you've got the LED display. And a lot of people go, oh, how do you do that? What's, what's the process like? It's not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain in um, a very brief way how to do so and there's one step to it well technically two one positive 12 volt two ground and everything else is plug and play everything else is the same as the steering wheel over there there's really nothing else to it but if you can't figure that out which all you need is just uh a, a multimeter just check the voltage get 12 12 volts and you're good but if you can't find one uh, we do offer a clock spring kit so you can get your own clock spring kit from us put it in the vehicle remove the clock spring basically put the new one in which will emit a 12 volt and then you can tap into that so that's what this video is about if you want to go ahead and figure that out how to do that you can watch this video links in the bottom if you want to go ahead and find all that stuff but let's go ahead and figure that out and for everyone else, yeah, you can end the video right here because all you just need is a 12 volt. But the one thing I don't want you to do is that messy wire inside your steering wheel because when you're turning and all that stuff, that's not very fun. But for those of you who stick around, you're doing it right. I'm just saying. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the layout of the wheel itself and kind of show you what we're looking at and dealing with and what you're gonna see. So the general layout of the wheel, you're gonna have your normal wires, which is your airbag and your multimedia. So your airbag wires are here. And then this is basically the power for your multimedia, which is your buttons, which are going to be located here. And then in addition to that, you have two wires that you will be working with. Red and black, which is very self-explanatory. Ground, positive 12 volt. It has to be a 12 volt. It will not work with anything else unless it's a 12 volt. So, um, as for the ground, the easiest way is to tap into this existing ground. Uh, there is a trick to this. I'm going to tell you right now. Do not have this wire touch any other parts of this metal here. So my recommendation is take this bolt out, put this in, angle it like so, so it's not touching this. Because if it's touching this, you're gonna, your horn is going to honk. This is your horn, the ground for your horn. So you don't want it just horning uh, off randomly. So have it just like that and it'll sit perfectly and then the easy part is just getting this 12 volt and you're literally done but getting this to be on a consistent 12 volt is the only hard part we have had a lot of people who just you know wire it in for the cigarette go all the way up their dash and just pop it straight through here and they're done which is fine but like i said when you're spinning this wheel it's going to wind up in here we don't want that so we're going to do a cleaner install if you do purchase the optional clock spring set here's what's included let me go ahead and show you exactly what that looks like here all right so talking about the included hardware kit you're going to have basically an extended obd2 cable now this is a ribbon cable so it's slim uh, it'll redirect from your obd port normally to under your steering dash trim and then you have a new clock spring and this will give you access to tap into the 12 volt, which is not currently existing in the clock spring for the E9X. We've tested everything and made sure, so this would be a very easy plug and play. This is the plug that will be tapping into the clock spring, and this will just basically go straight into the back, which you will see right here. Right there. And we'll talk about all, how to do all that in your posse tap. This is going to be where your 12 volt will go through, and we will redirect all of your power, your cables, I should say, into the existing slots that are right here somewhere. There we go. Just like that. What comes with this steering wheel normally? Um, obviously, the wheel, and if you opted for a cover the display in this case with the buttons and then the harness so the harness will be obd2 bluetooth transmission to the display and then the box itself which you'll plug in 
so the reason why we are doing this kit is because there is no 12 volt that exists in the OEM clock spring unless you have a heated steering wheel. If that's the case, you'll have to choose that yourself. And the reason why I don't like to have the normal um, normal 12 volt just running through the wheels because the clock spring is designed to uh, retract and move with the steering wheel versus throwing a wire through the cigarette and coming through your steering wheel. When you wind up your wheel three turns, that, that wire is going to wind up with it and you don't want that. So this will have it not only a cleaner look, but it'll be safer. So you're not going to have a wire spun up in your steering wheel when you're turning and doing, you know, track times or whatever it is. So, and this will just relocate the wire so it's not bulking next to your uh, your ankle. So. All right, so the step one for getting this wheel installed is having your flathead screwdriver. I'd ex uh, I would probably recommend something with a little bit of length just because you're gonna end up pushing and getting the airbag out, and that's pretty obvious. So get the airbag out. You'll see a couple holes on the side. Just pull it, push it straight through, and then you'll uh, pop off one clip on each side. And then when you're done, pops off just like that Un unbolt everything and then basically take the pins out here 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 and here and then the airbag is out now I got the airbag out take off these two wires cables just pull right out pretty simple make sure the car is off obviously I didn't say that before but make sure the car is completely off before you take the airbag out and then you're gonna take uh, I think it's a 17 uh, that will be unbolting this here and then from there this will pop right just pull straight out all right so it's 16 so once you get that out just like so this steering wheel will just fall right out so sometimes if you haven't taken it off before it might have to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of love but see that just pops right out now the biggest thing is uh the clock spring here so we're going to swap this out and in order to do so you just you'll see the lines right here you just pop the plastic up and down and you can remove this with the plug that it's on pretty simple all right so when you're taking off the upper and lower trim for the clock spring you're going to take a pry or a flat hat of some sort and basically down this line separate the two be careful because you don't want to you don't want to take a flathead that's too uh, thick and then chew up the plastic here. Obviously, we have nice cars, so we want to maintain that. So you want to be careful. Uh, you can see I kind of, over time, it's kind of taken a little toll. It's not too bad, but you don't want it to chew up or anything like that. So, But you want to get it all the way through and then separate the top and bottom. So to the deep corners here. There you go. And this should just, and this will just pull straight up just like that. All right, once you get the lower tray off, the lower tray is just held by this tab in the back. There's a piece in the middle, you're gonna wanna pull this apart and then push this down. And then you're gonna just use a, a T, I'm not sure what this is, 20, I don't know. But then you're gonna use this star bolt to get these off. There should be four of them. One, two, three, four. And once each of these comes off, just like that, the clock spring should just fall right out. All right, so you'll see, just pulling it. Just comes straight off. And then once you take it off, you'll see that there's it's held by two plugs. You've got one that's just a little clip and then this one where you have to push down, slide this piece over, it's like a little lock. Just like that. And this will pop out. Just like that. And then you have your old clock spring. All right, so this is where it gets a little tricky. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna transfer 
these six pins or wires if you will over to the new connector that we, we provide if you decide to go ahead and use our kit if not uh, none of this is necessary obviously but you're going to go ahead and just take each one in the same order and just transfer it over and you'll see here you just unlock it there's a little l shape here you can unlock it pull each pin out and just throw them into the new one all right so where it gets tricky is you want to have it in the same order the way that we will wire it is that this will be on what I will call the bottom right since it's going to be facing this way when you plug it in. So that would be there. So these six, as you see it right now, will go in the row to the left of it right now in the same order as you see it. So you transfer these six to the left of where this one wire, single wire is, if that makes sense, all right? So I'll go ahead and do that for you real quick and I'll show you. So starting at this side. So I took the first wire out, I put it in this corner. Now to show you what the back and the front looks like, so this is the back, because it was facing like this, it will go in to the one on the left, just like this and the rest will just go down the line in order this way. So top, bottom, like this. All right, so I'll show you the finished product. All right, so now that that is installed, you can see here I've got all uh, six pins going across, leaving that one pin here. So it's gonna go in uh, this way, I believe. So, uh, we'll leave all the other connectors here. Here is the new clock spring. Now, the next part is we will have to transfer over from the old clock spring uh, all the levers. So you'll see here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just take this and swap it with this. So we'll just go like this. All right, so we're just gonna pop this off. And you can see it's just, uh, it's not really held on with anything more than just a couple tabs and such, so. All right, tabs are off. We'll leave this over here. We'll grab the new one. And we'll just slide it right in so you'll see the connector here. We'll go with that connector there. So it'll go in just like this. And you'll have the tab connecting back down here and up here. And then we just snap it in, just like that. So, then we will go ahead and reassemble everything again. You will now have two big pins back here, which we will use. And then everything should be pretty easy uh, from here on. All right, now they got the clock spring in. Up next is pretty easy. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and take your ribbon, your OBD ribbon. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and plug in the female end to the male end on this uh, harness. You can just keep it bundled up if you want because you're not gonna need to extend it. This is going to relocate it for you so you don't have to worry about using the length of this. You're gonna go ahead and plug in this uh, piece into this box junction here. And then basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the entire harness and tuck it under this here. Basically under your steering wheel uh, cavity, if you will. And then your OBD wire, your ribbon wire, is gonna be plugged into this. So at the end of the day, you're gonna basically have it flush so you're not having this harness sticking out here. So you're gonna plug it in and then the ribbon will go all the way to here and relocate the OBD here. Now if you ever need to use it, you can still use it. You just unplug the ribbon. You can still plug everything in. Um, if you want to do it clean, you're going to just take this trim off, which is very easy. Pull this off, pull this up, and this will be exposed. Put it in, tuck it in, put everything in. You're good to go. And the last bit is the one piece we'll talk about last year shortly. All right, and then you're going to go ahead and pull off your lever. Just literally a Phillips screwdriver. One more Phillips just right here, 
one here and one here, and this trim will just pop right out, and you can tuck everything in right there real quick. All right, so I just fed this through the trim here. I just fed it around all the way through, which is under this compartment. And then you're gonna go ahead and just take your harness. I'm just gonna tuck it straight under here. That way it doesn't get in the way, no one sees it. And more importantly, it's safe from anything else that way. Everything's wired. And then when we wanna use it, we just plug in the OBD ribbon here, which will give it a still nice clean look as you can see, so. And then everything is now in, <clears throat> safely tucked away. The last piece is, I have it wired so the 12 volt uh, will come through this white wire. Now what do I mean by that is, we have the 12 volt come through from the, uh, uh, basically the box uh, is what we pre-wired to do. So now we'll just come through the clock spring automatically to this white wire so um, that way you don't have to figure all that out yourself and posse tap it it'll just come to this white wire so the last bit is just to get the 12 volt power which is the red on the steering wheel over there to come to the white wire here which you can just splice it yourself or just uh, tap into and then the ground onto the ground there and then you're done so I'm gonna go ahead and put the trim back together, the bottom trim back together, put everything back in, uh, put the wheel on, and then we're just gonna go ahead and take the final piece, like I said, to splice this onto the red here. And I already did the ground, so everything should be good. OBD's plugged in, should just light up and we should be ready to go. All right, wheel is in, clock spring is all buttoned up. Before I put the bolt in, uh, I did put these wires in, I did connect the white wire from this to my positive here the ground is here all in all you just need a ground and a positive but this is just the cleanest way to do it so you don't have wires hanging so you can't even tell i close the obd thing nothing's hanging here everything looks 100 percent oem so um i'm gonna just test it make sure everything's good before i button her up and put the airbag or uh, before i put everything back in i'm just gonna toss in the airbag and turn it on see what happens all right airbags in Everything is wired, put together. So, I'm gonna go ahead and start it and hope for the best. Let's see. There we go. And it lights up and it's reading everything from the OBD. It's showing me, uh, I think that's miles, average miles per gallon, that sounds about right. RPMs. Yep, that's RPMs. Bar boost. That's cool. Yeah, this is uh, kind of what's showing up. So I actually didn't know, I actually knew it didn't light up at first because it blew a fuse. So I would warn you guys to have an extra 5 amp fuse on hand for your uh, cluster because my cluster went out thinking it was the footwell module, it was the cluster, blew a fuse, replaced it, it was fine. I think just because all this extra electricity is just kind of, the amperage is kind of just pulling from it, so I blew a fuse, so keep that in mind. I am going to just put that out there. Please, please, please get, have an fi extra five amp on hand. If your cluster doesn't work, if this doesn't light up, if anything doesn't work, if your OBD is not working, uh, none of that was working, so we just blew a fuse, checked, it was fine. It was a quick uh, diagnostics and found that, and everything's working just perfectly. So, um, yeah, everything looks beautiful, and it's lighting up, and it looks like... It's reading perfectly, so pretty happy. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I will go ahead and have some details below. If you guys need the kit, I'll put that below, but this is kind of just for you guys. I am making this, and hopefully to be able to give more content. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Peace. The one thing you have to know with this is you cannot use your MHD wireless adapter. It sucks, but you gotta deal with it. That's the only thing you can't do. You can't use it at the same time. You can use one or the other. You can 
unplug it, put in your MHD, and do all that stuff, but you can't do both, so it kind of sucks. Uh, which doesn't matter because in most cases, if you're using the MHD, you're probably logging, you're probably uploading a tune, which is not a big deal, but if you're gonna go ahead and use Stingle, it's probably the other 99% of the time you're driving, so don't worry about it. Just putting it out there. And there you have it. You guys graduated. It's pretty simple, uh, a lot simpler than it looks, and to be honest, it's, it makes a world of a difference. My mentality is the steering wheel is the only thing you're touching in the vehicle, so might as well have it be nice. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed, leave a comment below, subscribe, hit the like button. We are going to be doing a very big build on this F80, which will include that steering wheel that you saw up there. Actually, let's go look at it, which will include this bad boy right here. And I am very excited. Honeycomb carbon. Alcantara, and I'm going for that gold stripe. No, that's not yellow, that's gold. So, I'm gonna go ahead and have that on there, uh, which will also include this little bad boy and a couple other things. So, those are the stock wheels. That's the diffuser. I'm not gonna try and leak too much more, but you're gonna have to follow us and subscribe. So, one more thing. <laughs> okay, I said too much. See ya.